Hey out there, World Wide Webbers. This is D. Travis Clem, composer, writing the music that no one else will. You just heard a composition of mine called Serially Generated Facially Developed Aggregate Palindrome, also known as The Blooming. I suppose you could also call it Serially Generated Facially Developed Aggregate Palindrome, a.k.a. The Blooming, SGPDAP The Blooming, or simply The Blooming. Since it's such a short work, I thought I'd take a few minutes here to describe how and why I wrote it. Please excuse me if I get into math or music jargon that you're not familiar with. First off, you may be asking, why is it so short? Well, a friend of mine pointed me to a competition for a chamber symphony, and the only stipulation on the composition, other than the instrumentation, was that it had to be six seconds or less. Any style, any category of music, go wild, but six Mississippis long. I'd written a few miniatures before, but never anything this brief. I considered it quite a challenge, and I dove right in. For this piece, I used a compositional tool I came up with in college that I call interval serialization. Basically, you start with a set of intervals, keep them in an order, and find every way you can change their directions. You can have a bidirectional approach to your intervals, which would mean an interval can either go up or down, or a tridirectional approach, which would mean an interval can go up, down, or remain stationary. For this piece, I used a perfect fourth and a minor third as my interval set, and used a tridirectional approach. So the permutations of directions were up, up, up stationary, up down, stationary up, stationary stationary, stationary down, down up, down stationary, and down down. You can put these permutations end on end to make a melody. In previous pieces, I've rearranged the order in all kinds of different ways, but for this piece, I wanted to keep it simple. I used the order I just described to make an 18 note melody, the 19th being a repetition of the first. One of the things I like about this technique is how every up interval has a down interval somewhere else, and vice versa, so the melody will always end on the note on which it began. Next, I borrowed a development technique from a composer named Steve Reich. If you aren't familiar with his work, you should be. He is brilliant. In his phasing technique, you take the first note of a melody, and make it the last note, and you've got a development of said melody. Then you take the new first note and make it the new last note, and you've got another development. Treating the melody like it's on a loop, you can start from any note along it, and you've got a new development of the melody. I moved intervals instead of notes, and I was able to get 18 different melodies out of the one I started with. When the melodies were played together, their individual notes combined to make chords, some of them rather dense at times. But I noticed that the chords mirrored each other over the entire piece. The first and the last notes were unison, but the second and the second to last chords were identical. Same with the third and the third to last, fourth and fourth, etc, etc. I thought this was a really neat feature, so I called attention to it in the title. I picked a note for the piece to begin on that wouldn't be too unkind in my instrument's ranges, I played around a little with the rhythms, trying to vary things for the stationary intervals, and I gave the piece a name. With my interesting sense of humor, it said for a work so short, the title should be something long, like if it took a while saying it, the music itself could be over before the name. Plus, the way the melodies start together, move away from each other, and come back together, it kind of reminded me of a flower's petals opening and closing with the sun. All this stuff may bring up questions in your head. Should you, the listener, hear these constructions in relationships? No, not really. If I accidentally make a typo putting the notes down, I generally don't hear the mistake, and I'm the guy writing it and knows what I'm doing. You might also wonder, do these compositional techniques make the results better than a piece of music where the composer didn't do this stuff? Hypothetically, say a composer found a pretty melody and wrote chords that support it, and moved between dissonance and consonance with balance and flow. Is this hypothetical work less good than mine? Well, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. In this case, it's in the ear of the beholder, so I can't speak for every listener out there. For me, personally, I enjoy the results. And the organicism of the music, the, the self-reference and consistency, they excite a part of my brain that also digs fractals and the work of M.C. Escher. It's how I'm wired, so I go with it. So, now that you know more about this piece and my composing style, let's give it another listen. I hope you enjoy, or at least better appreciate my piece, Serially Generated, Facially Developed, Aggregate Palindrome, also known as The Blooming. <laughs> 